Hi everyone, welcome back to Kids Church Online. It's term three and I bet you thought you were going back to school this week. But instead, we're back in lockdown, stage three restrictions, and you're probably all staying home to do your school online as well from next week as well as doing Kids Church Online. I'm not sure when we're going to be able to come back together to church to have Kids Church. But in the meantime, we'll keep on doing the videos so you can keep learning about God and we can keep in touch this way. Now, last term, we were learning about Paul. We learned about how Paul traveled all around to lots of different countries and told everyone he met the good news about Jesus. And then in the holidays, we went back in time to the Old Testament. We learned about Esther and how God rescued his people when they were living in Persia, when Haman had planned to kill all the Jews, and yet God rescued his people at just the right time. He made Esther queen and she was able to save all the Jews because of how God worked through ordinary events. Now this term, we're going even further back in the Bible, still in the Old Testament, back to the book of Samuel. Now, you might remember last year, we learned in Kids Church about Joshua and how he led the people into the promised land. And then there was a time of the judges where God's people turned away from him, but then God would raise up a judge and then they would defeat their enemies and there would be peace for some time until the judge died and then the people turned away again and so on and so forth. Now in the Bible, if you've got a Bible at home, you might like to look this up. The book of 1 Samuel comes just a bit after Judges. So it's kind of not long after Judges that this is happening. Now let's have a quick look at our Bible timeline and see if we can put it in order so we know where we are in the Bible when we're looking at Samuel. Now what was the very first thing that happened in the Bible? Can you tell me? If we open up our Bible at the very first page, the first thing that happens is God made the world. So that's the first thing in our Bible timeline. What happened next? He made the land, he made the animals, and then he made the people. There's Adam and Eve, but oh dear, they're eating the fruit that God told them not to, and that's when everything went wrong. Moving along in our Bible timeline, not telling you every single thing that happens, but just hitting some high points, God chose somebody. Do you remember? He chose a man. He made three special promises to this man that he would have land, that he would have many descendants, and that he would be a blessing to others. Do you remember that man's name? Here he is down here. It was Abraham. He's next on our Bible timeline. Now, Abraham never got to see the promised land. He never made it there. But before the people got to the promised land, they were slaves in Egypt. Maybe you remember us learning about that before. How did they get out of Egypt? God raised up Moses and then he led all his people out of Egypt. A big rescue of God's people. After that, Joshua was in charge after Moses and brought them to the promised land finally and put up a big stone to remember and then we come to the time of the judges. Here's some pictures of a few of those judges. And that's where we find ourselves starting our new series today. 
Our new series is from the book of 1 Samuel. So if you've got a Bible, you might like to read along with us there. But to hear about our story today, we're going to travel back in time and cross to the good news 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 desk for a special interview. Hello and welcome to the Good News News Desk, the news desk where you only hear good news. I'm definitely not Michelle reporting to you today. And today we have a good news interview. We'll be meeting Hannah and she has some good news to share with us. Welcome to Good News News. We're reporting today from Shiloh near the tent of meeting where people come to worship and sacrifice to the Lord. And today we'll be talking to Hannah, wife of Elkanah, about how the Lord has worked in her life. Welcome to Good News News, Hannah. Hi, thanks for having me. Hannah, I understand you've been through some difficult times. Yeah, that's true. For many years, all I wanted was to have a child, but it never happened for me. For some reason, that's just what God had planned for me. Your husband, Elkanah, has another wife, doesn't he? Does she have children? Yes, she does, and that's made it all the more difficult. Penina would always tease and make fun of me, always reminding me that she had children while I didn't. And no matter how sad I got, year after year, she would continue. And what happened when you went up to worship here at Shiloh? You remember where that's where the tent of meeting is. Just talking. Yeah, we did. We would always go up to worship and sacrifice every year. But I would always find it so upsetting because I couldn't understand why God had prevented me from having a child. And Penina would always be so mean to the point where I couldn't even accept the extra portions of meat that Elkanah would offer me from the sacrifice. All I could do was cry. And what happened next? What changed? I couldn't stand to be around everyone, so I went to pray. And Eli the priest was sitting outside. I prayed to God, asking him to remember me in my sadness and give me a son. I made a promise to God that if he did give me a son, I would give him to the Lord and he would belong to him for life. No one would ever cut his hair and this would be a sign that he belonged to the Lord. Hannah, you've been sad for a long time but you know that all things are possible with God. Yeah, and Eli the priest saw me praying, but because I was praying in my heart and not out loud, my lips were moving, but he couldn't hear my voice. So he thought I was drunk. But I told him that I had not been drinking, but that I was deeply troubled and praying to God because I was so unhappy. Eli told me to go in peace and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. Well, Hannah, I'm sure everyone wants to know did God answer your prayer? Did you have a son? I did, and I named him Samuel. Finally, I had the child that I waited so many years for. God answered my prayer, and I kept my promise to him. I promised to give Samuel to the Lord, and that's what I did. I didn't go up to worship at Shiloh until Samuel was old enough to be given to the Lord. And this year, although he's still young, Elkanah and I took him to Shiloh. We made sacrifices here and then gave Samuel to Eli. I reminded Eli of when he saw me praying to God. I told him that I'd asked God to give me a child and that he had done so. And so now I was giving Samuel to the Lord. For his whole life, Samuel will serve the Lord. I don't understand, Hannah. You desperately wanted a child and now you've given him away? Well, I promised God that if he gave me a child, I would give that child to him to belong to God for his whole life. I believe that God has a plan for Samuel. And even though I waited many years to have a child, if I hadn't had to wait for so long, I would not have promised my child to God. And now God answered my prayer at just the right time for his plan. So God will use Samuel according to his perfect plan. Well, Hannah, it's been great to talk to you and see how wonderfully God has been working in your life. I look forward to seeing how God will use Samuel. And that's all from Good News News. 
What a great good news story from Hannah at Good News News. Now it's time for Kids Church Catch Up. Let's see who we're going to catch up with today. Hi, I'm Eli. Hi, I'm Josh. <laughs> Anna. Josh, what's the best thing about isolation? Um, I'm staying home with my little sister Anna and my big brother Eli. And what's the worst thing about isolation? And we can go around and see other people and, and, and we can see Grandma and Granddad. And how does, um, how does your faith help you at this time? Um, when, we're, when we're sad and we did something wrong, God still loves us and one day God will defeat the virus. Eli, what's the best thing about isolation? Playing Nintendo. <laughs> and Eli, what's the worst thing about isolation? Um, strict teacher mummy. Yeah. How does your faith help you at this time, encourage you at this time? Um, because God's in charge. And his family um, won't... And one day and we'll be with him okay. and he we won't you. get sick anymore. Okay. Cool. Well, we heard in our story today that Hannah prayed to God for a son and he answered her prayer. She had a son and then she gave him back to God because that's what she had promised him. Now, does that mean that for all the years that Hannah was waiting to have her child and she was praying for a child, does that mean that God did not answer her prayer then? What do you think? God always answers our prayers. And there are three main ways or three main answers that God can give us when we pray and ask him for something. He may say yes and give us what we've asked for. He may say no and we won't have what we asked for because that's not part of his plan. The other answer that God may give us, which is the same as what he gave Hannah, is wait. So that might mean that God will answer our prayer and give us what we asked for, but we may have to wait until it's the right time for God's plan for him to answer yes to that prayer. And that's what happened to Hannah. She had to wait for many years until she was able to have the child she so desperately wanted. She waited for so long that she promised God to give him the child that she would have, that this child would belong to God forever. Now, God had a plan for Samuel. God was going to use Samuel to be a great leader of his people. And so he answered Hannah's plan prayer at the right time for his plan. At the time when Hannah had promised to give her son to God so that he could use him as he needed to for his perfect plan. What sorts of things do you pray for? Do you pray that you might get a new toy? Do you pray that people will stop being mean to you? Do you pray that you'll be able to go back to school soon? Now, we don't know how God is going to answer our prayers, but we know that God is always in control. So we can always take our prayers to him and he will answer our prayers, whether it be a yes, a no, or a wait, he will answer them in the way that conforms to his perfect plan. He is in control of everything and so he always knows the right way to answer our prayers. 
All right, stop there for a second, because I... Sometimes we might pray for things that seem to take a long time to happen. You might be praying for someone you know to turn and trust in Jesus. Other people might be praying for a war to stop or for world peace. People might be praying for the end of the coronavirus. Now, some things in the world can take a long time to change and some things in the world will never be fully made right until Jesus returns. But does that mean we should stop praying for them now? Because that might not happen for a long time? No, we should definitely keep praying for these things. We don't know when Jesus will return. It might be soon, it might not be for a long time. And yet God loves to hear our prayers and we should continue to pray for him even though we know that only when Jesus returns will everything be made new. It's time for us to pray now. Hi guys, I'm Chelsea and I'm going to be leading us in prayer today. So in the story today, we saw how Hannah finally got her prayers answered after so many years of her praying and waiting. And this is because it was all according to God's plan and his timing. God will always do things according to his plan and he's always in control. And he also always answers our prayers. Even if sometimes the answer isn't what we wanted. It might be a no or it might be a please wait or it might be a yes. So even if sometimes the answer isn't what we expected, it's important that we trust in God because he knows what's best for us according to his plan. So God knows us and wants us to pray to him. So it's really good for us to give thanks and say sorry and to ask him for what we need. Um, and we should also think about how we can pray to fit into God's plan. So this might mean praying that he'll use us to do things in our lives according to his plan and what he knows is best for us, or asking him to lead us on the right path. Um, and when we ask for something, we should ask that God does it according to his plan and in his timing, because he knows what's best for us. So let's pray now. Dear God, Thank you for the lesson we learned today, and thank you that we are able to continue Kids Church online. Thank you for always listening to our prayers and for answering them. Please help us to trust in you always and in your plan and its timing for us. And please use us to perform your plan and to help us to be more like Jesus every day. Sorry that sometimes we can be selfish and forget to trust in your plan when we ask for things. Please keep us safe and healthy and look after those who might be sick or going through tough times at the moment. Thank you for everything that you do for us. In Jesus' name, Amen. It's time for our memory verse now and we've got a new verse today. Now, I've made it into a bit of a puzzle, so let's have a look and see if we can work it out. I've got quite a few pieces over here. What do you think is the best piece to start with? Corner pieces or should we start with the words? I think I'm going to start with the words. I can see this piece goes up this way. Oh, here we are. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. That's a clue. I wonder if we can find the other part of that. Here we go. Look at that. It's coming together. That's where our memory verse is from. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 35. If you've got a Bible handy, you could look it up. But I'm going to keep going with the puzzle. Now, this looks like a corner piece. What do you think? Up here maybe? In my heart, I will raise that part goes there. What will we raise? Crops? 
copies according to that doesn't match I will raise oh look at that fit right there now where I don't think that bit's going to fit there maybe there it's like, like a match not really maybe there looking better no blue lost my blue tack I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who will do we've done it we've done it we've done it here we are I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who will do according to what is in my heart and mind that's from 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 35 Shall we try saying that one again? Let's get it stuck in our brains. I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who will do according to what is in my heart and mind. Who do you think God's talking about when he says he will raise up for himself a faithful priest? I think it might be Samuel, you know. I think we'll hear more about Samuel next week how he is going to be a faithful priest for God, doing according to what is in God's heart and mind. Now it's time for craft. So I hope you've got your sheets ready. Our first craft for today, you're going to need two pages. So the first one looks like this. Here we can see Eli, who was the priest at, the, at Shiloh where they came to worship and here's Hannah and her husband Elkanah and the second sheet we need looks like this two little Samuels but you only need one of them so there's two on this page but you only need one so if you've got a brother or a sister who wants to make a craft as well you can both work off this one page now our first job is coloring I've done mine already and our second job will be to cut out Samuel. So we cut along these solid lines. I'm going to use the Samuel that I've colored in green. And the other one can be a spare. So we're cutting out Samuel. Going all the way along the top. Now we'll go along the bottom, cutting along the solid lines, and then we're going to have some more cutting to do on the next page as well. So you'll remember from today's story that Hannah prayed for a son. And then when he was old enough, she took him back to Eli, back where people came to worship at the tent of meeting, and she left him there. Now, we've got three cuts to make on this page. You can see the solid lines here, here, and here. So, best thing to do is to slightly fold your page in half so we can just do a snip. One here. A little one to get us started over here and the last one over here once we've gotten started we can snip up to the edges oh did a good job there right up to that edge and then down to the other one and the same over here down to the bottom oh, I might have cut a little bit too far in that one never mind I think it'll be fine now we need to thread Samuel in. Let's see how we do this. Mm, 
Hm, hm. No, sure. Hang on. I think it has to go this way. A few moments later. All right. Here we are. And if we pull the arrow along, we can see Samuel standing with his parents, with Hannah and Elkanah. But when the time came, he went to join Eli at the temple, at the meeting tent. So practice threading those through and then you can tell the story to your parents showing how Samuel went to live at the tent of meeting with Eli the priest. That's our first craft for today. Moving on to our next craft. Our sheet looks like this. And once again, there's enough on this sheet for two people. So if you've got a brother or a sister who wants to make the craft as well, you only need to print one of these sheets. One is enough for both of you. So I've only covered it in one side here and we'll need to cut it down the middle. So someone else could use that other side. And here's my one. Now what we're making here is a baby's bottle because Hannah kept Samuel at home until he was old enough that she didn't need to feed him milk anymore. So we can see what happened in our story here. Hannah was sad because she really wanted a baby. She promised to give him back to God to serve in the temple and Hannah kept her promise. She gave the baby back at just the right time. Our next job, once you finish the cutting, oh, the coloring, is to do the cutting. So again, cutting out around the edges of this baby's bottle, around the solid lines. I wonder if you've got a baby in your house or if you can even remember when you were a baby. Or maybe you can remember when one of your brothers or sisters was a baby. It can be very hard to remember when you're a baby. Most people can't remember that. All right, I'm cutting all around the edges and then we're going to need to do a little bit of gluing. Nearly finished with the cutting. So this is what our finished cut out baby bottle looks like. Then we need to put a bit of glue down this side and then we're going to glue the other side and make it so that it will stand up. So gluing it together. So on one side of the bottle we can see poor sad Hannah so wanting a baby and then she promised to give the baby to God and here she is happy with her baby who she then took to Eli the priest at the temple. There's our baby bottle. That's all we have time for today. Enjoy making your crafts at home. Please practice that memory verse. I would love to see a video of you sending in sent in to me saying that memory verse so we can include it in our videos. And I'll see you all next week. Bye.